If there's anything that Adamant and Perrin have clearly showed us, it's that being hot isn't a skill. It's a genetic factor. Cause Jesus, man. These two have the community's head spinning. If it wasn't clear, yeah. Perrin is 1 million percent Adamant's ascendant and hails from what seems to be the now lost Diamond Clan. She even has a Diamond Clan logo at the back of her pants, which a specific cutscene tried to make really obvious for anyone who may have missed it. But Perrin doesn't just share ties with the Diamond Clan. In fact, Perrin's whole character to me seems to show that the Diamond Clan and Pearl Clan actually end up living together in harmony, and that both clans eventually learn from each other as the end of Legends Arceus implied. And this is largely shown through with the Houston Pokemon that are present in Kitakami. Hisuian Growlithe, Whitestrap Basculin, and of course, Blood Moon Ursaluna. In the story of Pokemon Legends Arceus, the Diamond Clan and Pearl Clan were complete opposites, so much so that they almost even lived in extreme opposites. The Pearl Clan lived in the cold, harsh environments of the Alabaster Icelands, while the Diamond Clan lived in the wet, marshy Crimson Mirelands. And the Crimson Mirelands is rather interesting when we bring up Kitakami in the mix. The Crimson Mirelands in modern day Sinnoh would be close to Pastoria City and the Great Marsh, but the essence of what the Timeless Woods are seemed to be closer to be what Eternal Forest would be. In fact, its Japanese name is Eternity Forest. Now of course, it would make sense that if he swim Pokemon had to be anywhere, it would be in the Timeless Woods, right? Right. But the Pokemon in question being Ursaluna is the crazier part, because Ursaluna makes a whole lot of sense. Ursaluna, while it may have been a Pokemon of the Pearl Clan with Kalaba being the one to tame and manage the Ride Pokemon, was a Ride Pokemon of the Crimson Mirelands, meaning that it was the Ride Pokemon of the Diamond Clan's home. Maybe they would have no such connection or relation to it as the Pearl Clan would, but it's the closest one to them. Shout out to Kuroblitz for pointing this out to me. So Perrin setting out on a journey to find and capture a picture of Ursaluna is almost like her bringing part of her roots back to her home and almost as if it's acknowledging the harmony that the Diamond and Pearl Clans now have, as previously, Kalaba never allowed Arezu to help tame Ursaluna, as she's from the Diamond Clan, but now in modern day, it is indeed a Diamond Clan member who's helping Ursaluna here. And it goes a bit further than that. While Iskan and Polina were having a forbidden love story going on, being from two different clans and still being in love with one another during a time of conflict between the two clans, they eventually, I'm sure, were able to get together and continue their lives with one another. Which is interesting because Iskan was the Warden of Basque Legion and Polina was the Warden of Hisun Arcanine. But now in Kitakami, we see Perrin over here with two Hisun Growlithe, similar to the way Polina had two herself, almost showcasing that, yes, Iskan and Polina did live happily married together, and after some time, these Pokemon didn't belong to the respective clans, but they were considered to be just Pokemon for anyone to be a friend, irrespective of clans. White Stripe Baskin also being Kitakami is interesting, not just because of Iskan and Polina's relationship, but also because Hisun Arcanine and Basque Legion are from the Cobalt Coastlands, which is right next to the Diamond Clan settlement of the Crimson Mirelands, which again makes it perfect for Perrin, because it's like she's visiting and seeing all the Pokemon closest to her old home. And while Hisun and Lilligant, the noble Pokemon of Crimson Mirelands, isn't there, Petlil is in Kitakami, so that's neat. Also in the story of Legends Arceus, the Diamond Clan and Pearl Clan had certain qualities to them that they wouldn't let go of. Yes, of course, both clans hated each other thinking that the other version of Almighty Sinnoh was the right one, and that later got resolved once they learned that both Dialga and Palkia existed, and from there, they went on to live happily amongst one another. But beyond that, there were a few unique quirks, and the obvious two being that Adamant doesn't like to waste time, and that Irida sees a vast open space in this world, and that she wants to go and explore the world. To me, Perrin exhibits both these traits. Now, I don't think she's a descendant of Adamant and Irida or anything, but it's cool how she herself is taking both about not wasting time and how she still wants to travel and take more photos. How she's still tied to Sinnoh and Hisui, but she still wants to go out there and explore. Her entire character to me feels like the embodiment of the after effects of Legends Arceus, and that the player character's efforts in those games did not go to waste. In fact, because of it, things turned out for the best for everyone. Perrin to me is a living embodiment of the harmony between both clans. Will we see Irida's descendant eventually? I hope so, but I don't know if we will in these games. Maybe we will see them in the next set of games, whatever they may be. But one thing's for sure, we're definitely going to be seeing Perrin again in the Indigo Disc. And I'm excited to see what other subtle reveals she presents to us to let us know what really happened after the events of Legends Arceus.
Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Take care of yourselves, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you over on the next video, alright? Later, bye!